How you doing, people? <clears throat> Let's talk about a little rounds here since I've been cracking on 9 mils and 45s. The lifelong debate. Uh, I just did a video on my horse channel, so I figured, what the hell, I'll get one on here. See that tree right out there? I got one of those cams on it. I don't know if you can see it. See that little camera? Little trail cam? Trying to see what the hell's going down in my pond. But damn, that dude's... Those cameras are bad. I mean, they catch everything. They, they end up catching the cattle. Those cattle, it's on this tree right here. And these cattle are way across the street, way over there. And it's picking them up moving. It's picking, uh, I can't see because Buddy's butts in the way on the pond. But, man, when I go check that sucker on the cameras, it's pretty cool, man. It gets anybody driving up to the gate. You can blow it up. It takes 12 me megapixel, I think, uh, pictures. It is, it's a cool camera. So, uh, and it's, it's hidden. You can't really see it. And uh, it's snapping pictures. And, I mean, I go out there and check it. And it, I think I put a, uh, what I put? I didn't put a 32 gig. What's below that? Is it 16? I think a 16 gig in there. And it'll run for several days and take three pictures every hour if it picks up movement. But anyway, uh, if anybody wants to go get one of those cameras, man, they're pretty uh, pretty handy. So let's talk about uh, bullets and ammo for a second. <clears throat> and look, right from the jump street, I am no reloader. I think people that reload all their ammo... They know a lot about ballistics and pressure and powders and uh, all, of, all the nitty-gritty stuff about bullets. Because bullets are complicated. People are like, ah, oh, what's the best bullet? What's the best gun? What? Look, when you get into, and a couple people put that damn study. I'm trying to do a, trying to collect some data on that FBI study where they said the 9mm was better. The short and dirty of that video is going to be, first of all, the federal government takes the lowest bidder and... The federal government always goes cheap, and they always go PC, and they never go standards because standards require ethics and, uh, you know, integrity and other things. So if you're going to use the federal government as your guideline for what they tell you is best because they use it, well, you're already on the loser side in my book. I know people be out there, well, you were an FBI instructor, you're FBI, you worked FBI. Yeah, whatever. That's why I know what I'm talking about, okay? Because I was in there and I know the type of people they have. They're bookworms, they're yes men, they're very regimented, they can't think outside the box, they're all about bureaucratic paperwork, they don't work the streets, they don't go out there and get down and dirty, they want to sit back in their little, you know, million dollar mansions that the taxpayer pay and tell everybody how great they are. And they want to show up afterwards and go, we're in charge, we're the FBI. So if you want to use the FBI as your standard for everything, then use them. But don't pick and choose the FBI's a bunch of idiots on everything else. And now suddenly because they picked the 9 mil, it must be the best round ever. Because our government would never be wrong, never lie to us, never give misinformation, and never buy the cheapest thing. Or never have somebody get in their pockets padded, and that's why they chose that versus chosen something else. So that's going to be the short of that FBI study, but I'm trying to find out, you know, to where they cherry pick some things. So let's talk ballistics. And maybe not, I'm maybe not in ballistics, just rounds to my level of understanding. And I'm not the expert reloader, but I understand speed and mass. I, I get it. Energy, that transfer of energy. Uh, if an arrow a bow and arrow, if, if, you, if I shot you with a bow and arrow that was the size of a sewing needle, and I shot you, it would go in, it would make a primary cavity, wouldn't make much of a secondary cavity because a, a, a rifle doesn't, or an arrow doesn't travel that fast, but it would either go in and hit bone and stick in the bone, or it would hit meat and go straight through and make a hole. And you would either pull it out or pull it in. The fatty tissue around that hole would close. Probably wouldn't bleed a lot. Now, that's just with a regular type of arrow. And I'm no arrow expert. There's going to be some bow hunter out there who tells me I don't know what I'm talking about. I, and I don't. I'm just telling you, trying to give you something to connect how bullets work. So, if that arrow is like the tip of my finger, it's going to go straight through no problem. 
But if I put a bigger blade on there or multiple blades on the end of that arrow, and when it goes through, it makes all these cuts where the blades are, now I have four or six or eight cavities instead of that one. So if one arrow goes through like this, if I put a tip on it like this, all these are gonna make different wound channels, so to speak. So when you're dealing with bullets, when a bullet shoots out, and there's a, there's a, again, I don't know all of it. Somebody's gonna be out there and educate them in the comments. I read the comments. I get educated from people that know more than me from the comments. When a bullet comes out of a barrel, the hammer hits the primer. The primer ignites the powder inside the, somebody will be out here. It's called our shell casing cartridge. You're calling it bullet. Yeah, it's a bullet. I just call the bullet the whole damn thing, all right? A bullet is a primer. It's the casing that holds the powder. It's the powder inside, and it's the bullet lid thing that flies out. Now, you know, projectile, cartridge, all the word. Yeah, if you're into it and all, I'm talking to the layman here. If I've got a bullet, when a when the hammer hits, something punctures the primer, the little round thing in the back of the bullet, it ignites the powder inside. The powder inside explodes, and it pushes the bullet out. Now. That's, that's a down and dirty on what happens when you pull the trigger and a bullet goes off. As that bullet comes out the barrel, the longer the barrel, but it's not infinity, I can't have a mild barrel and get more pressure. It all depends on how much powder. A shorter bullet with less powder will not create normally as much energy or explosive power to push the bullet out faster has a longer bullet with more powder. Now, again, you can get into powders. There's powders that burn fast. There's powders that burn slower. There's powders that don't create as much smoke. There's powders that uh, don't make as much noise. Look, the, you can just get into powders itself and it becomes, you know, it, and it's like in life and horses and everything, I tell people all the time. You don't know nothing about something until you get into it and really dig deep because everything that you usually get into is a lot deeper. That's why there's no simple answers. That's why I can't say the best bullet. That's why I can't say the best powder. That's why I can't say the best cartridge, the best round, the best horse. What I get all the time, what breed of horse is the best? There ain't no breed of horse the best. A horse is a horse. You don't understand the complexity of a horse, so you think breed matters. People that don't understand bully, bullets will think the FBI said the nine mil is good. It must be the greatest round in the world. Well, that's because you're a dummy. Okay? So, you're not calling I use a 9 mil. I don't use a 9 mil. Shit, if it works for you and stops a bad guy, power to you. So, when a bullet comes out of a barrel, it starts losing power as soon as it clears the barrel. The explosion happens. It pushes it down the barrel because their barrel has rifling. That, express, that explosion and expansion of heat, explosive power, whatever. It causes all this pressure and it pushes that bullet through the barrel. And the rifling in the barrel starts the bullet spinning, which stabilizes it. If it, before when you use ball ammo with no rifling, the bullets, if it had a nick on it, would go off to the left and go off. They weren't real accurate. When they started putting rifling, they became very accurate. People say shotguns aren't very accurate if you use a slug. Before they used to just have a ball in there and it was a slug, it wasn't that accurate, but now, they have rifle barrels with rifling and they have bullets that has rifling on it. So when it goes through a straight barrel, it makes itself spin and it stabilizes. So a shotgun with a slug is a very accurate round now. But you'll have people say, no, no, it's no good. All right, whatever. I mean, I've seen shots, two, three hundred, four hundred. A rifle slug is accurate as hell. So, and again, it depends on the shooter and the wind and the bullet and the barrel and the gun. And uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of other factors. So. When somebody tries to give you a short answer on bullets, you need to question, do they really know what they don't know? Because they may think they're the smartest person in the world, but they don't even know what they don't know. So in order to learn or process something, you have to admit that you don't know everything. Which is why I'm all, on this channel, I, I like my viewers, because I got smart viewers on here, smarter than me in a lot of areas, and they put great comments and they put something, I'm kind of like, man, it don't make sense, and I'll go research it. And I'll be like, shit, that's right, and, there, and I'll prove it. And I do my own research and my own critical thinking, and then I accept it. I don't just accept it because somebody writes it in a comment. I do my own research. Now, if four people say it, and I find a couple sources, I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of research. But if one person says it, 
and I do research and I find two places and one agrees and one disagrees, then I'm not counting that. That's just me. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I could be wrong for not believing it, and it's right. So the down and dirty on bullets is, once it leaves that barrel, the explosive pressures that are pushing it down a barrel stop. And because of gravity and wind and atmosphere and all the other things that affect bullet moisture, all that other crap, the bullet immediately starts slowing down as it leaves the barrel. Rick, that's not true. Uh, I've, I've tested a gun and it, I tested it here and I tested 100 yards and it was faster. Well, you know what? Maybe so. But I'm telling you, in physics and logic and just common sense, if there isn't an explosive force forcing it out of the barrel, and once it gets out of the barrel, there's nothing forcing it, it starts slowing down. That's just the way it works. So, the longer the barrel, the longer the bullet is pushed out that barrel, the more speed it's gonna pick up. But again, if your barrel gets too long, now you start losing velocity because the explosive power pushes it as it gets 12, it's still pushing it. As it gets 13 inches, it's still pushing it. As it gets 14 inches, it's still pushing it. As it gets 16, 18, 19 inches, now the gas is having more area to escape. There's not as much pressure. And now the bullet starts slowing down before it even gets out the barrel. So when somebody goes, what's the best barrel, what's the fast bullet? It depends. My 350, people say my 357 because I have a two inch barrel, I don't get the speed that I get. They're right. You do not get the speed out of a two inch barrel that you will get out of a four inch barrel. You don't get the speed out of a two inch barrel that you would get out of a six inch barrel. However, if I put that same round from a two inch barrel in a 26 inch barrel, I'm probably gonna lose speed. I don't know if I'll lose as much as the two inch, but maybe so. But you have to understand how that bullet works and how it gets out of the barrel and how it picks up speed. So. Speed with bullets, to me, the two main things with bullets is speed and weight, okay? And the other people will say, well, it's fragmentation and it's whether it holds it and it's bonded and whether it's gonna stay together so the mass actually transfers and is it balanced and it, yeah, there, there's a, a, a thousand factors, I get it. But to me, just basic nuts and bolts, I want a bullet that's heavy and I want a bullet that's fast. Now, everybody's gonna say that 45 is a bad bullet because it's subsonic, it's 900 feet per second, it doesn't go whatever, whatever. You get slower rounds, but when you have mass traveling slower, if I have a car going 30 miles an hour and it hits you, it's gonna hurt. It's only 30 miles an hour. If I throw a baseball 100 miles an hour and it hits you, it's gonna hurt, but it's not gonna do the damage of a car that hits you at 30 miles an hour because the mass of the car is moving and you're gonna impact it less when it hits you and it's gonna transfer all that mass at 30 miles an hour. But a baseball going three times the speed of that 30 mile an hour car isn't gonna do near the damage. So to me, it's all about mass and speed together, but you can't just have speed, you know, and that's what basically a 5.56 is to me. It's a small mass bullet that goes really, really fast. And I know I'm gonna have the, the lovers, it tumbles and it rolls and it ricochets and it does all this damage and it's the greatest round in the world because the government says so. All right, whatever. I'm telling you, I'd rather a bigger bullet that goes through somebody than that tumbles and does that. Now, there's gonna be people that you get more damage from the tumbling, you get whatever, okay? You, when, when, when deer and large animal are brought down, they're brought down with fast, big bullets, rifles. Now, you're never going to get the velocity out of a pistol that you're going to get in a rifle. It's just not going to happen. With the rifles, you have a longer barrel. You normally have bigger bullets, which means you have bigger area to hold more power, which means you have probably heavier weight bullets or longer bullets than you do on a pistol. So all those factors, and of course, bullet shape also comes in. A long, pointy, thin bullet is going to have greater accuracy than a fatter, rounder bullet when you get out to distance, okay? Uh, what, what's that Lapua round? That's everybody's like the, the shit. Everybody loves this 348 or whatever. There's some Lapua round that it's very long and thin, and I mean, it'll reach out 15, 1800. I mean, it's freaking accurate, and it pushes out with a lot of power. 
The bullet's not that bigger than a 308, but the bullet shape is longer and thinner, whereas a 308 is shorter and fatter. And because it's fatter, as it's flying through the air, it's going to get more drag, it's going to have more effect from the wind, it's going to have more effect from different environmental things. So it's not, it's going to, the gravity is going to affect it more and it's going to start dropping more. So bullet shape is another thing. Most bullet shapes for pistols are about the same. There's that one F, FN57 or something round that looks like a little mini, I call it a little mini 556. And it's a pistol round. It was the same round and gun that the guy used, the, the peaceful religion Muslim guy, captain in the military that killed all those innocent uh, military dudes on base because the freaking government said military shouldn't have guns. So, of course, they made a no gun zone and all these people died and the liberals cheered. But whatever, I digress. So bullets, to me, the down and dirty is I want the heaviest bullet I can carry that's going the fastest. So a 45 plus P, a plus P means plus pressure. I, I used to tell people it's plus powder or, or, or uh, what's the other P? Pressure, powder, eh, I can't remember. There was another P that I used to use. But I think technically in the books it's pressure. And you get more pressure normally from more powder. Now these reloaders will be out here. That's not true. If you get a faster burning powder that's got a higher flash point, you can use less powder and get more pressure. I get it. You can. But just for the simple dummies out there, if you put more powder, you're going to get a better explosion normally, and you're going to get more pressure, and you're going to get a faster bullet. Okay? So, and again, when they test guns, they test them usually at three times the pressure of a regular bullet. So whatever your bullet is firing, they're going to test that gun at three times that pressure. So just in case you put a little extra powder or you get a double load or you get, you know, somebody gets out there messing around, they put too much pressure, the gun won't blow up just from a little variance in the bullets. And that's why some guns will say don't use plus P, don't use, most manufacturers legally wise are going to say don't use plus P because we don't want the liability and we'd rather you use the slower dumber bullet because that way we don't have to say that we told you you could use plus P and then when it blows up we're liable. This way, if it blows up, we're not liable. So, can the gun handle it? I, I think most guns can handle it. I mean, we don't shoot. It's not like we're in war right now and we're shooting 50, 100, 500 rounds a day and our guns are getting really, really heavy use. That's, that's not happening. People are shooting one, five, you know, especially in rifles. I mean, I, I don't even know if people shoot, what, 50 rounds a year out of their rifle? Maybe, maybe, I think 50 is a lot. Maybe 100 is like, unheard of if you got a rifle a bolt action hunting rifle 100 rounds a year is a lot of rounds now an ar shit i'll go through 100 rounds in you know a couple three minutes if i want to shoot fast so it depends on the guns but bullet just remember when people start talking bullets it's so complex and there's so many factors and you can get down in the nitty gritty but when it comes down to it you want something that's going to make a long deep hole you want something that'll penetrate and hopefully hit vital organs or I've got a picture on my wife, the fatal T right across here and right down the, 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 the spinal cord. If you hit the spinal cord with pretty much any bullet, you're going to take a guy out. He's going he's gonna to stop most vac. Most people cannot take a bullet in the spine. The celery stalk where the, where the, 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 the spine and the, the, the central nervous system connects to the brain, a bullet hits that area, doesn't matter what bullet is, you're pretty much going to hit it. But again, Accuracy, you can never depend on accuracy in a unplanned, spontaneous emergency shoot. So the people who are saying, well, if you're good with an IML and you can hit your target, that's all you should need is an IML. You don't need a big, big bullet. You don't need to, you know, look, man, if it was up to me, I could have a rifle bullet in my handgun and handle it. That's what I'd want. I want deep penetration. I want a nice hole, good primary cavity and speed to give me that secondary cavity, that explosion. If you watch one bullet hits a jail, the bullet goes straight through, but there's this big thing that kind of, it's called a secondary cavity or the shock or explosion or th there's other terms for it. But, uh, and again, I'm not up on all that, but you want a fast, heavy bullet that's going to go through. And that's another thing that always bugs me about military and cops is I don't want over penetration. You know what? I want over penetration. People are like, well, you want the bullet to stay in. I don't. I want over. I want my bullet going through the dude. 
I want to make sure if it's a if it's any organ or any bone or etc., it's going to keep traveling and go through. I want to destroy everything in its path when it goes in somebody. Okay, because that that's your biggest likelihood to stop somebody. Now there's going to be other people. Well, then you lose energy because the bullet weight isn't transferring that energy into the mass, and and, and that's the theory behind a 45. A 45 won't go through, and then you get that full 230 grain bullet in a person, and it stops. So the body stops that 230 grain move, movement from the bullet that's going 900 feet per second. The body absorbs all that energy, and that's what you want. Yeah, you do want that. That's nice, but. Overall, if the bullet makes a longer wound channel, channel which a 9 mil supposedly will do, it travels fast. Should I just lie? All right, young people, sorry about that. My battery went dead and the video stopped real abruptly, which is okay. So now I'm going to add in a couple visual things. So I was talking about wound cavity and secondary cavity. I'll put a couple pictures in here um, and look at some different things that I was talking about and try to show it to you. So when I was talking about primary and secondary cavity, this right here is your primary cavity. The bullet was shot in here. It was going fast just when it's entered, and it slowed down and stopped here in the jail. So you notice when it enters very fast, it causes this secondary wound channel. Okay, a lot of people call it shock, hydrostatic shock. Um, if this happens very quick, which it does, it's very large here on this one, if there's any organs or things here, it could tear tissue, cause blood loss, or induce shock. Those are all good things when you're trying to stop somebody. So when you can get a big secondary channel, and you usually get your secondary channel from speed, faster the bullet, faster the secondary channel. Of course, there's other factors in that. How much does the bullet expand? How big is the bullet? Is it long and skinny? Is it fat and short? Is it expanding? Uh, so all of those things will affect this is big or small. You notice this is very small secondary channel. This is a large secondary channel. This one had a large secondary channel here. Looks like it has good expansion. 45, 230 grain bullet, a lot of mass. All these bullets got 12 inch penetration. Now people say you don't want over penetration. If you can get 12 inches in a body, that's kind of what the standard is that people look at a bullet. You want good 12 inches. Well, that's great when you're shooting jail, but when you're shooting a human, if he has a necklace on or a watch or it hits something in his pocket or you in a nine mil bounces off your cell phone. No, oh, I'm only kidding. I'm cracking on it. But if you got a cell phone, if you've got a jacket in the wintertime, if you have layered clothing, if you have a t-shirt, a shirt, a sweater, and then a jacket, all those things will affect this penetration. So because these bullets are penetrating 12 now, they may not penetrate 12 when you start getting into a body. When you shoot a body that's big, is it solid muscle or is it just fat? That will affect penetration. Do you hit it from the side or from the front? Does it bounce off a bone? Does it hit something else inside? So there's so many factors on bullets for somebody to go, oh, this is the best bullet and you need this and you need, and this is more important. Look, understanding, your secondary cavity is this expansion. Your primary is basically, if you draw a line, the path of the bullet. However big the bullet is, is your primary channel. This is a bigger bullet, it looks like. It's going to have a bigger. Now, what they're finding in autopsies is that once the bullet goes through, the skin tends to collapse around it. So even if you have, unless you have a really big channel, like the size of a baseball or a 50 caliber or something, then it, it will move so much mass out of the way and do so much tearing in secondary. Again, remember a 50 caliber is traveling so fast and so big that it, it puts thing it puts people in shock even if they get hit in the hand or the arm. People will go in shock because it just kind of explodes. It goes through so if you understand explosives like dead cord. Dead cord is basically a fuse, but it's a very fast burning fuse. And it burns so fast, I forgot what it was. If you put a thing of deck cord around the earth, it would take less than a second or two seconds. Or I, It's some outrageous number. It's very, very fast. When you light deck cord, it's an explosion because it burns so fast. So when you wrap deck cord around something and you light it, it's almost like it just explodes on itself. So it's very, very fast burning. 
So when a 50 caliber goes through you and it goes so fast, it tends to cause an explosion. And it destroys everything in its path and disperses everything so fast that it destroys it. These secondary cavities, if this was a 50 caliber bullet traveling 3,000 feet per second and weighing 500 grains or whatever, a 50 caliber, these secondary cavities would probably be as big as this page. I mean, it's just huge. It destroys everything in its path because bigger, heavier, and faster is better. Nobody talks about a 50 caliber being a bad round. Nobody talks about a 50 caliber if you hit somebody, you have to hit vital organs. You don't have to hit hardly anything. Matter of fact, most people are killed with secondary flying devices from the 50 caliber. A 50 caliber hits a block of cement the, the 20 pieces of cement that fly off will cause more damage than the bullet itself if it just hit one person. So, but I digress. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay on point here. So, understanding secondary cavity, penetration, speed. Speed will give you this secondary cavity. Your primary cavity size. If this bullet is the size of a 22, you're going to have a very, very small. Now, if you push a 22 fast enough, you can get this deep penetration. And if it's going faster, you'll get this secondary. But because it's so small and light, it's not dispersing. It will disperse, but it's not dispersing mass out of its way. This little picture here shows the difference between speed and bullet on how things happen. So this bullet was shot at 700 feet per second, and you notice it stayed intact. So it's going to make a primary cavity of this. It's only going 700 feet. That's probably when it leaves the barrel. By the time it gets to you and it hits you your clothing, it may be going six or 500 feet. So it's going to maintain its shape. Some people say they want a bullet to maintain its shape. Other people want it to deform like this and mushroom out because it becomes bigger. This is going to be bigger than this. This will stay in a body, whereas this may go through a body. And you notice... As the speed goes up, 700, 1100, 1300, 1500, the bullet deforms more when you increase the speed. So that's another reason speed is better, but depending on the bullet. If you just want a primary cavity, they will make a bullet that will stay this shape even though it's going 1500. But when you're using lead or bonded and all this other you know crap that I don't know nothing about, I mean, there's so many different things out there. So when somebody's talking about oh, nine, nine mil is the best because the FBI said, I just don't buy that. It's just not that simple. When you get a simple answer to a complex question, you ought to question that answer. Is, is it really valid or does it really apply? Talked about the dude shot 33 times with a nine millimeter. People are going to say, well, the bullets were just ball or they weren't this or he was under the influence or they didn't hit vital areas. You notice this bullet here may have hit the heart. This one could have hit the heart. This could have hit the heart. Uh, any of these could have cut the juggler vein. Any of these, depending on the angle they came in, could have went back and severed the spine in the neck. Uh, any of these in the head could have went through maybe and hit him in the head. Again, 9 mil bullets have come a long way since this, but the, the, the basic principles behind bullets are I want to destroy something in the path I want enough penetration to destroy, and I want it big enough to create the biggest hole, and I don't want it ricocheting off bones, fat. If this guy has a gold chain and it ricochets off, uh, I mean, a lot of bullets, people shoot themselves in the mouth and it ricochets off teeth. Uh, so there's issues about ricocheting and what it hits. I showed this bullet. People are saying, oh, this was photoshopped. This was made to look bigger. I don't care if it looks big or not. Look at the longer shrouds of of copper or the the jacketing rolling back the larger mushroom in the middle it's bigger in the back regardless on whether it's in raised or not you're just looking at a bigger now this bullet is faster and this bullet is slower yet because of the way the bullets are made they both did a good mushroom they both expanded good this expanding slows them down and keeps it in a body which the theory is if the bullet stays in a body, the bullet, absorbs, the bullet absorbs all the energy that the bullet was carrying. So this is going 900 feet per second. This is going 1,300 feet per second. The body's going to absorb that. 1,300 feet per second at a lighter bullet may not be as good as 230-grain bullet going 900 feet per second. I just told you about the baseball. 
I can throw a baseball at 100 miles an hour and hit you. And I'm not going to do the damage of a car going 30 miles an hour because a car weighs a ton or two. So you have to understand there's so many variables for someone to say, the FBI uses the 9mm, so it must be the better bullet. Therefore, I'm the smartest person in the world because I agree with the FBI. All right, whatever. Here is a front view of a 45 and a 9mm. This is what it looks like before it's fired. This is what it looks like after it's fired. How can anybody look at these two and say, this is a better bullet? I, I, I just, now this bullet is going to be traveling faster. Yes. This bullet may get more penetration. Well, it's smaller. This bullet's bigger, so it's going to slow down a penetration. If people are honest, if these two bullets were traveling at the same speed, will you at least agree that this would be a better bullet? If they're traveling at the same speed. So if you're saying if they're at the same speed, this is a better bullet, when they're going slower and faster, you're saying this is a better bullet only because it goes faster. So, I mean... Just, again, there's so many variables. Man, that's a nice AR. Uh, does the fact of the way she's holding this gun... Hey, pay attention. I know where you guys are looking. Qu pay attention. It, does the fact that she's holding the gun different affect the bullet in here? No. No. It may affect the accuracy. It may affect where she hits. But when she pulls this trigger and this bullet goes bang and that bullet comes out of here and is pushed down this barrel with explosive power and comes out of here at its maximum speed, it does not change anything on the outside, does not change that effect. A bullet will be a bullet when it's fired. The length of the barrel will matter. The, the, the type of bullet, the type of powder, the speed, all those things will matter. But it's going to be shooting a 5.56 five, round or a 2.23, probably 5.56. Five, five, I talked about the fatal T. The fatal T is right down here. If your bullet hits this fatal T area, your likelihood of getting a one-stop shot is much greater and is increased. Even no matter what bullet, if I shoot you in the back, if this guy was facing the other way, and I hit this fatal T area with a 22, i I'm probably going to stop this guy. If it hits this spine and disrupts the spine or the brain area, you're probably going to get a stop. The problem is when the pucker factor hits, you're shooting anywhere, and when a bullet goes through, it may hit one lung, it may hit the heart, it may hit the intestine. There's so many factors, and that's why, well, if you're good, Rick, and you practice all the time with your 9 mil, you can shoot a lot of rounds very accurately. The 9 mil is the perfect gun because the FBI said so. I don't buy it, people. I have this picture about the celery stalk, this stem that goes up to the brain. Uh, when you went through sniper school, SWAT training, etc., if you were going to snipe out a dude, you want this in the ear. You'll hit it. If you come in the ear, you're going to hit it. Come in the eye, you're probably going to hit it. In the nose area, you're going to hit it. Shows in the, coming in the nose, in the back of the head. If you hit this stem, the guy's dropping. He's not pulling the trigger. People be like, if you shoot a guy who's got a gun, he's going to pull the trigger. Not if you hit this stem. It's done. The whole body goes limp, and he drops like a sack of sugar. So ending in, in this bullet debacle, uh, plain and simple, I like heavier bullets that travel fast. That's what I like. And people are going to say, well, then why do you like the 45? Because it's slow. You can get a 45 plus P, it's going to snap, it's going to kick more. Yeah, you can argue second shot. Yeah, you can argue you're not as accurate. Yeah, I'm telling you. Most shootings happen within lunging or grabbing distance, uh, especially for if you're not a cop and you're running around with a gun, you're, you're, you've got different rules of engagement. As a citizen carrying a gun, if you're carrying it concealed, nobody knows you have a gun, you get to choose when you show somebody you have a gun, you get to choose when you shoot. You can wait till a person turns around and shoot them in the back. So the odds of you as a citizen getting to choose when you use a gun and you don't have to follow the rules of engagement and the PC crap, you're probably going to be a little bit more accurate. If I'm going to have that advantage, I want the biggest, heaviest bullet I can have. That's my opinion. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's for everybody. All I'm saying is there's so many factors when you're talking bullets. You have to be able to understand there's a lot more that you don't know than you know. And for somebody to come out with a simple answer... And say it like it's fact that if the FBI picked a 9 mil, it's the best round out there because the FBI knows what they're doing. Man, I'm telling you.
That's a flawed belief and a flawed theory in life to succeed, in my opinion. We'll end that there.